In this video, we will discuss three ways of expenditure policy. The classical motivation for development of public expenditure is normative. The aim is to, uh, to achieve greater equality. One such normative theory of redistribution is fis fiscal federalism. Because the lower level of government are constrained with respect to macroeconomic policymaking, the central level should have the responsibility for uh, stabilization. For example, uh, by sm uh, smoothing demand over the economic cycle. Local uh, governments should focus on providing public services and redistribute income locally in line with the particular political preferences of their constituency. The theory of fiscal federalism maintains that if the central government were to take over the responsibility of local governments, there would be a loss of welfare as constituent-specific tailor-made policies would be replaced with one uniform expenditure level that would be suboptimal to all. Now, critics of uh, fiscal federalism argue that decentralized public expenditure might have negative external externalities. Locally funded public goods in one area might be consumed by people living in another area. Differences in local level taxation and spending might also lead to tax competition in areas in order to attract business. A perhaps equally uh, important worry is that fiscal decentralization means that the burden of providing uh, for universal uh, public, public services for disproportionality on poor areas. To counter this, the central level in a federal system should you use the central budget to uh, reduce regional inequalities as well as individual level income inequalities. We can also use positive theories to explain uh, expenditure policies. Here the starting point is that in a democracy, majority decision making results in a transfer, transfer of resources from the minority to the majority. As there are more citizens on low income than on high income, one might expect progressive tax, uh, taxation and extensive welfare program for the poor. However, as the pivotal voter in the key electoral district often is better off than the, me than the median voter in the society as a whole, particularly if uh, turnout in elections is low, particular parties or often advocate expenditure program that disproportionate disproportional benefit those that are better off than the average citizens. Moreover, when budgets are voted uh, through as a package deal, it is easier for the legislature to increase the size of the budget than to decrease it. If the size of the budget is stable, any increase in one area must result in a decrease in another area. However, by increasing the budget, it is possible for all, group to, all groups to get something. For example, in a coalition between a rural constituency and in the inner cities, the former might support a welfare program for the urban poor in return for a latter support for farming subsidies. Such vote trading will increase the level of public expenditure and risk increasing the public deficit. There are, however, institutional mechanisms that can restrict budgetary expansion. First, balanced budget rule prevent the expenditure from increasing without simultaneously raising income. So if revenue can't be increased, uh, changes in the budget they can only occur by reallocating spending from one budget post, uh, which benefits one group of citizens, to another budget post that benefits another group. Second, high uh, threshold, for example, unanimity for adopting the budget means that it's easier to prevent funds being di diverted from one group. However, high majority threshold also make it easier for everyone to extract something from the budget in return for their support. As a result of such institutional constraints, all legislators can demand that contributions made to the budget by their supporters are fully compensated. Such compensa compensation might take the form of transfer on the expenditure program or indirect benefit uh, from non-expenditure policies. The insights from Olsen are also relevant here. The benefit from the budget tend to go to concentrated group while the costs are diffused. The direct support for far, uh, that farmers get from the EU budget far outweigh the added cost uh, to taxpayers and consumers. Also, actors that lack resources or information are underrepresented in their policy process. As a result, public expenditure benefits concentrated minorities at the expense of diffused and disorganized groups. So to conclude, public expenditure is a core responsibility of government. 
it is used to re redistribute resources from one social group to another. While redistribution is supposed to reduce inequalities in society, the reality is often very different. Who gains from expenditure policy depends on the interests of the political decision makers, the power and composition of the interest groups, and the institutional rules of the budgetary decision making process.